Okay, so we are talking about simple linear regression, just getting introduced to the idea of regression. Um, and we've been using, using an example uh, looking at the relationship between the percentage of a CEO's compensation that comes in the form of options. I'm going up to the table here. So this percent options here is the percent of a CEO's compensation that comes in the form of options, and that's going to be our explanatory variable. And we're using that to uh, make inferences about um, the percent change in sales for a firm, uh, which is our Y variable. Obviously, you know, the regression works for lots of other situations. Um, but what we're looking at, where we ended up um, when we left off last time, was talking about the uh, estimated regression equation. So a regression equation, uh, what we're really trying to do is we're trying to make an inference about uh, the conditional mean conditional expected value of y, meaning that if we know x, what's our best guess for what y is? Um, and uh, the true relationship involves population parameters alpha and beta, and this is our, um, this is what we call our regression equation. And this is what we're trying to estimate. Now you'll notice that this doesn't have the error term in it, that's fine. Uh, we're going to assume that that error is random, right, so it's essentially unknowable. Um, but Except for the randomness, we're gonna we're gonna try to estimate the rest of it, right? So that we can come up with our best guess. Uh, what we called this before was the uh, estimated regression equation, um, which has y hat on the left, which is the this y hat is the uh, predicted value of y, and on the right side, then we have our estimators. It's gonna be equal to a plus b x. This is the estimated regression equation, and it'll always look something like this, although in practice, if you want to write it out, sometimes it can be useful to uh, write it a little bit differently, um, where instead of y hat, you have the actual name. So we could call this, uh, what are we trying to describe, percent change in sales hat is equal to a plus b times percent of a CEO's compensation that comes in the form of options. And so that's our estimated regression equation for this case, where our predicted value of sales uh, is the part that excludes the error term, right? So that's going to be the mean of the distribution. Um, and essentially what this says is that for any given x, there's a distribution of possible y's, and that distribution changes, right? It changes by this beta. Um, which changes the location of the distribution. Uh, but at the same time, the actual value of y is drawn from that distribution, right? Because there's an error term that's going to modify that. OK, now uh, we looked at what some examples of this might be once we get an estimate of a or b. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to look at uh, the least squares approach, which is the most common approach um, that people use. The least squares approach to simple regression. How do we get A and B? Well, that's what we're going to look at. So it's a pretty simple idea. What we want to do is we want to get as close as possible to alpha and beta, um, which means we want to, what we're going to do is we're going to have to define a good fit. So what's a good fit? Well, the way that we're going to define it is we're going to define how far away we are, right? So let's say we for an individual person, we have a, an individual observation of y, call it yi, right? Individual person or data point. And then we have our predicted value of y, which is y hat i, right? Well, the distance between these two is going to be yi minus y hat i. Um, and that's useful. The only problem is that if we don't, if we just use that, then we'll have uh, being too high or too low will offset each other. So we don't want to do that. We don't want um, big errors above and big errors below to offset each other. So what we can do is we can take this and square it, just like we did with like standard deviation uh, or variance. We take this and square it. Now what we have is a squared deviation for observation i. What this means is that, uh, well, first of all, it heavily weights uh, larger uh, differences. That's one thing. And the other thing is that they're all additive, right? These are all going to be positive because they're squared. And so if there are big differences, um, then these are all, then they're going to add up together. What we can do now is we can sum these, right? This big sigma is a summation symbol from i equals 1 to n. And what we're going to try to do is minimize this, 
right? Because this is a measure of how far away we are. We're going to try to get as small as possible. Now this is uh, good. Why is this good? Well, in principle, this is going to be minimized when alpha, when our estimate for, or, uh, when our estimate of alpha, which is given by a, is equal to alpha, and our estimate of beta given by b is equal to beta. When those are true, this is going to be minimized. Now there's going to be some error term, um, which is going to be problematic. But uh, if we do choose this, choose this correctly, um, exactly correctly, then all the the only difference here is going to be the uh, squared error terms, or epsilon, not e. Sorry, that should be epsilon. Uh, let me just scribble that out. So if we do this exactly correctly, then we have our squared error terms is the only source of this error. So that's what we're going to try to do. Um, once we can do that, or we'd be in, we'd be in good shape. Okay. So how do we find the best estimates of alpha and beta given our data? Um, well, we use calculus. Um, I'm not going to go through that now. I do recommend looking in the appendix in your book or googling it. Uh, it's worth looking over once. It's not you know. Even if you're not comfortable with calculus, it's worth a look. Probably, if you are comfortable, it's really worth a look. And it's only one page to show that uh, to figure out what values of a and b are going to minimize this. Essentially, you plug in the uh, equation for this and the equation for this, and then you and then you minimize this. If you do that, these are the estimates you get. These are the formulas we're going to use. So b, which is our estimator for beta, is going to be a fraction. It's going to be the sum from i equals 1 to n of x sub i minus x bar times y sub i minus y bar there we go do that over the sum from i equals 1 to n of x sub i minus x bar that whole quantity squared now it's important to note that we have a sum on top and a sum on the bottom. So for each observation, we're going to come up with a product that's on top, right? So for each observation, we're going to come up with this, and then we're going to add all those up, and then for each observation, we're going to come up with this, and then we're going to add all those up, and you're going to get, uh, you know, a sum up here, which is, you know, you'll find a column and then you'll add them all up, and then a sum down here, and divide those by each other, and that'll give you your b. And so that's how we're going to work that out. Once you've found B, then you can find A. The formula for A is Y bar minus B X bar. And that's our best guess for the intercept term. Um, now, let me just outline what these mean just so we, we know. It may have been a while. So XI is the value of X for observation I, which is our explanatory variable. Remember? Uh, so that's going to be the percent options um, for i in our in our uh, example. Y i is going to be perhaps obviously the value of y for i. So that would be the change in sales for i. And so we're looking at the you know we're multiplying deviations together there. X bar is the uh, mean of x in our sample. So that's our sample mean of x. So we have to find that. Y bar is our sample mean of y. And uh, n, when we're summing, is our total number of observations, our sample size. Sometimes people write OBS, OBS, total number of OBS. So that's what we have. OK, so let's look at the five data points we had already. Let me uh, pop up an Excel spreadsheet. This is much easier to do in Excel. You can do it by a hand table. And you know if you're going to be working with pen and paper, you should practice doing this with a hand table. Um, but it's pretty. It's easy enough to do by hand as well. Or, or it's much easier to do with Excel, is what I mean to say. Okay, so these are our our data that we started with here. We've got two five observations. Um, if we want, we can pop an eye over here. One, two, three, four, five. We don't really need to do that, but it stays true to the uh, the basic idea. Um, now, what we need to do. Hold on. Let me. Uh, there we go. What we need to do, we'll go back to our, our estimators, is come up with sam our sample means first, so x bar and y bar, then our individual deviations in both directions, and then the product, and then the square down here. So we're going to come up with b first. That's always the way to go. 
So let's go back over to Excel. Uh, the first thing to do to come up with X bar is to actually we need the sum. So take equals sum, and we add these up. You can do it by hand if you want. And you get 150. And then our average will be that sum divided by n. So equals this divided by 5. 30 is our x bar. So this is at 30 is x bar right there. We can do the same thing for y bar and see that 19 is our average value for sales. In Excel, you can just select them all and it shows you the sum and the average down at the bottom, um, uh, which you can now see I'm pointing to. But uh, we, we're going to want to take advantage of those, so it's good to, to actually have the formulas. You can also use the average function if you like uh, to do that right away. Um, but I already have it here. That's fine. Okay, now we need the individual deviations. Let's do xi minus x bar, which is going to be 60 minus 30. I'm pressing F4 to make this absolute so that when I copy and paste it, it won't change. 28 minus 30 is negative 2, 32 minus 30 is positive 2, 30 minus 30 is 0, and 0 minus 30 is negative 30. It won't always look parallel like this, it just happens to look that way right now. Um, but if you sum these, they should always add up to 0, that's true. Let's do yi minus y bar. Take 29 minus 19, we should get 10 here. Oh, and I need to make that absolute. 32 minus 19 is 13. 13 minus 19 is negative 6, 17 minus 19 is negative 2, and 4 minus 19 is negative 15. Again, if you sum these up, they should sum to 0. Okay. Um, so now we have our xi minus x bar and our yi minus y bar. Now we can do the numerator. What we're going to do now is the... Uh, so xi minus x bar is the x deviation, so I'm going to call that x dev times y dev, y deviation, right? So those are our... That's, this, this is the this term right here for each individual observation. It's that product at the top. So what I'm going to do is first take 30 times 10, get 300. Negative 2 times 13 is negative 26. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. 0 times negative 2 is 0. And negative 30 times negative 15 is 450. So those are my products. When I add these together, this gives me the numerator. So this right here is the numerator. And now I need x. I need to square the x deviation. So I take x i minus x bar. Thirty squared gives me nine hundred. Uh, negative two squared is four. Two squared is four. Zero squared is zero. Thirty squared is nine hundred again. Um, and I sum these up to get the numerator. Uh, this is the denominator. Okay. So now what I've done is I've calculated this sum and I've calculated this sum so I have these. If you look you can see that this bottom part is always going to be positive right because even if these were all negative or if some of them were negative each individual term is positive. That is not necessarily true for the top right because we're not squaring so if this is positive and this is negative the top can be negative. The sign of the top of this fraction is going to determine the sign of uh, beta and it has to do with the, the pattern with which uh, x deviates from the mean and y deviates from the mean. If they deviate in the same direction on, in general then b is going to be positive. If they deviate in opposite directions, then b is going to be negative. And if they kind of switch back and forth, then uh, then that's when you get kind of offsetting entries. Okay, so what's our estimate of beta? We're going to use b equals, and then it's going to be the numerator divided by the denominator. 0 0.039 uh, is our estimate, and I can come over here and I'll write that down. So for our data, we have an estimated value for beta of uh, b equals, go back to it, 0 0.394, we'll call it that for now, use three digits. Okay, now we want to know what a is. Well, a is going to be, remember, y bar minus b x bar, which is to say we take the, the average, you know, on average, where what would uh, what's the difference? So we have y bar right here, that's 19. We have x bar right here, so a is going to be equal to y bar minus b times x bar. And because that's got some rounding issues, we can uh, just make sure that we've rounded properly. 0 0.394, try it again, we have y bar minus b times 
X bar. That gives us 7.18. So 7.18, 7.19. Um, either of those is going to be fine, right? We're we're not. If we want, really want to do this, we're going to use a more powerful statistical tools, not not by hand. But for for our purposes right now, to understand how this works, either 7.18 or 7.19 is fine. I'm going to go with 7.19 because technically that's a little more correct. So have this is 7.19 so if you ever have to write the estimated regression equation which uh, you will on an exam for example the estimated regression equation should look something like this either y hat equals 7.19 plus 0 0.394 times x or uh, percent change in sales hat equals 7.19 plus 0 0.394 times percent options. And that's our estimated regression equation, which is to say that's the best, uh, that's the best possible guess we can make with our data, which is really good, right? I mean, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty excellent. Um, we've done as good a job as we possibly can do uh, with our data. Now, if we put this data into Excel and make a scatter chart, uh, we can use Excel to do this. So let's look in Excel. Well, there might be some rounding error. But if you select our data, go to Insert, uh, Scatter, and put click on the dots, it'll give us a scatter chart. So this is change in sales. Now, if we select our data set and right-click, you can click Add Trend Line. Now, if we go down to the bottom, display equation on chart, click close. Oh, and that's that's our equation right there, right? That's pretty much that's pretty close to what we got, right? 0 0.394 times x plus 7.19. So the, just the order is reversed, um, but that's that's good, right? That's we did we did it right. <laughs> that's how you find out if we did got the right answer, um, and it does it for us there. Okay. Now, one of the most important parts of this is our estimate of beta. Uh, it tells us something very useful about the underlying relationship, um, and our estimate is given by 0 0.394. What that says is that for a one percentage point increase in options compensation, so you know going from 10% of CEO compensation to options to an 11% uh, of CEO compensation as options, we should expect on average a 0 0.394 percentage increase in sales growth. Um, really, that's not saying that does this mean that stock-based compensation increases sales growth? No, it doesn't. It might might go the other way around, right? Um, we, we can't tell which direction uh, is causal, if anything. Um, but it does say that they're correlated, right? So that firms that have higher, uh, larger proportion of their CEO compensation as options tend to have uh, higher growth in sales. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, correlation and causation as, as we go along. Um, but just because these two variables are related, they move together, that doesn't mean that the explanatory variable causes the dependent variable. Um, what we're measuring is just uh, the correlation. Right? So this is what we're really measuring, is the correlation. In particular, we're we are measuring, we will be measuring the partial correlation as we get to multiple regression. But we're talking about correlation, not causation. All right, so that's how you uh, estimate our simple regression equation. Um, and what we're going to do next is figure out how how wrong we are, <laughs> right? So we know we're off. We know it's inexact. Um, but can we conclude that this is our point estimate of beta? Can we conclude that in the population, beta is different from zero? We're going to have to learn how we do that next. I'll talk to you in a moment. Bye.